ओके हेलो एवरीवन सो वी आर एट द लास्ट टेन क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन बैंक ऑफ इंडाइस लॉग एर इधम सो वी आर डन टिल क्वेश्चन एटी सेवन एटी एट टू नाइनटी सेवन आर पेंडिंग लेट्स सॉल्व दम इन दिस वीडियो एज यूजल वी आर गोइंग टू ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस वी आर गोइंग टू ट्राई टू सॉल्व ऑल क्वेश्चन इन वन मिनट राइट सो दिस इज फ्रॉम एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू गो ओवर कंसेप्ट फॉर कंसेप्ट आई हैव अपलोडेड एंटायर बैच ऑफ लॉग एर इधम ऑन द चैनल फॉर फ्री यू कैन गो थ्रू इट and ideally you should try these uh, questions first and then come to the video so that it will be helpful to you no don't just see the answer directly okay so 88 88 89 are good ones 890 onwards we can sometimes put numbers sometimes go by option something 88 89 we cannot do anything like that let's try if log a plus b by 3 is equal to half log a plus log b then what is value of this first of all this means what uh, let's let's uh, take lcm so denominator is ab and a square plus b square right so we want a square plus b square by ab fine now let's see what they have given on the right hand side we have log a plus log b can i just write it as log ab right now half into log ab let's take that half to the power so what will we have log of a plus b by 3 is equal to log ab and that half i am taking into power So now we can remove the log sign. So we'll have a plus b by three is equal to root ab because ab raised to half is root ab, right? Fine. Let's remove that square root first because there is no square root here. Hmm. So for removing square root, we'll have to take square. So let's take square of both sides. Square square. A plus b bracket square will be a square plus two ab plus b square upon three square is nine is equal to root ab square is ab. Fine. Let's take nine to right hand side, so we'll have nine ab. Okay. Now, if you observe, we have a square plus b square here, right? So let's keep only a square plus b square on left hand side, and let's send that two ab to right hand side. What will happen? A square plus b square will be nine ab minus two ab. Nine ab minus two ab is seven ab. So can I just write a square plus b square as seven ab upon ab? So ab ab is cancelled. Answer is seven. Option C. Okay. This was a good one. Eighty-nine is exact same question. They have just reversed it. Okay, they have given something else and asked you something else. Okay, but let's try to go by the same way. They are they are saying if a square plus b square is seven ab, then what is value of this? Now we can easily get it because we have the answer to above question. Okay, but if not from exam point of view, let me tell you how to uh, go to the answer. Okay, just a second. So they are saying a square plus b square is seven ab, and they are asking this. Let's rearrange this first. Can I write it as log of find a plus b by three minus log a by two? That is half log a. Half log a is log of a raised to half, or rather log of root a minus log of root b. Right. Fine. Now we know that log a minus log b is log a by b. So log a minus log b is log a by b. So that is going to be log of a plus b by three, and then this root a also, and in fact this is also uh, a subtracted, right? So we can take root b also here, b, or rather we want log of a plus b by three root a b. Fine. So this is what we want. That's it. Let's try to get this from given part. A square plus b square is equal to seven ab. Now, first of all, we have a square and b square. Okay, but in answer we need a plus b, not a square plus b square, right? So let's try to convert it to a plus b. How to convert it? Now we cannot take square root directly because square root of a square plus b square is not a plus b. But if we have plus two ab here, okay, then we'll add plus two ab here also. Then what will we have? A square plus two ab plus b square is equal to seven ab plus two ab is nine. ab okay now we can take square root of both sides if you observe now a square plus 2ab plus b square square root of that is a plus b so a plus b is equal to square root of 9 is 3 square root of ab is root ab right so a plus b is equal to 3 root ab now we have what a plus b which is nothing but 3 root ab upon 3 root ab so everything gets cancelled log of 1 log of 1 is always zero option a is the correct answer okay From 88, you can directly get it, but in exam, obviously, you will not have that option. 90. 
if a cube plus b cube is zero, then value of log of a plus b minus half log a plus log b plus log three is equal to fine. We know a cube plus b cube is zero, right? Fine. So let's rearrange this first. Log a plus b minus half of log a plus log b plus log three. Can I just write it as half of log of three ab, right? That's it because log a plus log b is what log ab. So log a plus log b plus log three is log ab into three. So three ab, right? So now if we want to apply the same logic that we did in previous question, what we can do is we can write it as you know three ab raised to half, and then that is nothing but log of a plus b upon root three ab, right? Because log a minus log b is log a by b. So we want to find this ultimately. Just a second. Yeah. So we want to find this ultimately. Now they have given us something. A cube plus b cube is equal to zero. Now, if a cube plus b cube is equal to zero, then we have to arrive somehow at a plus b or three ab. Now, we know the formula of a plus b bracket cube. That involves three a b, three a square b, and three a b square. But if you know another expansion for a cube plus b cube, then this problem can be even more easier. A cube plus b cube can be written as a plus b into a square plus b square minus a b. Okay. If you don't know, what you can do is you can use a plus b bracket cube and then rearrange it. But that will take time. Okay. If you know these basic formulas, that is always easier. Now we know that this is zero. Now understand carefully. That means this into this is zero. That means either this is zero or this is zero because if two numbers are being multiplied, one of them has to be zero if the answer is zero, right? Now understand a plus b cannot be zero. Why? Because if a plus b is zero, then that means this will be zero. Log of zero is not defined, right? So that means this cannot be zero. A plus b. That means a square plus b square minus ab has to be zero. So now we have some new information. Let's try that. A square plus b square minus ab has to be zero. Now let's try to rearrange this to get whatever we want. Okay. Now we want a plus b somehow, right? Okay. A square plus b square. Can I write something like this? A square plus b square plus two ab minus two ab and minus ab. Okay. I'm just adding plus two ab and minus two ab. So that why. I can take this bracket a square plus two ab plus b square is a plus b bracket square minus two ab minus ab is minus three ab is equal to zero. So we can take this three ab to right hand side. So that means a plus b bracket square is equal to three ab. If we take square root of both sides, that means a plus b is equal to root three ab. That means this numerator and denominator is same. So log of one, log of one is zero. So after doing all this, answer is zero. Nothing else. Again, a bit tricky question in exam. If such questions come and you are not confident, my suggestion is leave them and go ahead and come back at the end because they will take too much time. You cannot afford to spend two three minutes on single question and even after that there is no guarantee of getting it correct. If you are confident, solve it. But if you are not confident, skip it and come back to it later. Okay, fine. Now ninety one onwards are not that difficult. Let's try to solve. If x is equal to log bc to base a, y is equal to log ca to base b, z is equal to log ab to base c, then what is value of x y z minus x minus y minus z? Okay. Whenever base is different, you have to apply change of base. Okay. But always first think whether there is any possibility of solving a question by putting numbers because that is going to give us the answer in fastest way. Can we? Can we put a b c as some numbers? Yes. Right. Let's put A B C as ten hundred and thousand. Let's see what happens. Ten hundred and thousand. So x will be what? Log of hundred into thousand to base ten, right? To base ten. Hundred into thousand. That means how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four, five. So answer is going to be five. So x is five. Y. Y is going to be log of c into a. C into a is what? Ten into thousand. And that is thousand into ten, and b is hundred, right? Ten into thousand is ten thousand. Okay, so we have log of ten thousand to base hundred. 
100 raised to what is 10,000? 100 raised to 2 is 10,000. So y is 2. Z. Again, A into B is what? 10 into 100 to the base 1000. 10 into 100 is 1000. Log of 1000 to base 1000 is 1. So Z is 1. That's it. So 5, 2 and 1. Let's put it here. 5 into 2 into 1 minus 5 minus 2 minus 1. That's it. So check. 10 minus 5 minus 2 minus 1. 2 is the correct answer option D for question number 91. Next 92 is very simple. On solving the equation log t plus log t minus 3 is equal to 1, we get t as fine. Can I just write log a plus log b is log a b. So it is log of t into t minus 3 is equal to 1. 1 means log 10, right? So that means t into t minus 3 is 10 if we remove log from both sides. That means t into t minus 3 is 10. That's it. So you can just put the options and solve. Uh, so 5 into 2 is 10. So 5 is the correct answer option A. You can solve, make a quadratic equation and solve also. That is fine. No issues. Other answer will be 0. Right. Sorry. T square minus 3T is equal to 10. Okay. Other answer will be in this case. Not in the options. Correct. So we can just tick on A and move ahead. No need to go to quadratic equation and solve. Right. Fine. Because 2 and 3 is not giving us the answer. Next. <coughs> Sorry. 93 on solving this equation, we get value of T as. Okay. So, hmm. concentrate carefully. We have to start by the outermost log. Now, let me take up a fresh page for this so that it is better understood. Log 3, log 2, log 3. Let me write here. I hope I have written correctly. I don't know. Yes, 3, 2, 3. Fine. So, consider this bracket. We know we can rearrange log into indices like this. So, 3 raised to 1 is equal to this part. Log, log, t. Right. 3 raised to 1 is nothing but 3. Again, we can rearrange into indices. 2 raised to this is equal to this. That means 2 raised to 3 is 8 is equal to this log of t to the base 3. Again, we can rearrange 3 raised to 8 is equal to t. So t answer is going to be 3 raised to 8. Let's check if it is in the options. Check if 3 raised to 8 is 6561. Yes, option D is the correct answer. Next, 94. On solving this equation, we get value of t as. Okay, now t is in a base of log, right? Fine. No issues. Let's try to solve. Again, what we can do is we can rearrange it into indices. Half raised to 2 is equal to this. Right. So let me write it properly now carefully. Log, log 32 to base 4, base t is equal to half raised to 2. Half raised to 2 is what? 1 by 4. Fine. Again, let's try to rearrange it. t raised to 1 by 4 is going to be this. So that means log of 32 to the base 4 is going to be t raised to 1 by 4. Okay. Now, again we can rearrange it. 4 raised to this is equal to 32. So, 32 is equal to 4 raised to t raised to 1 by 4. Okay. Can I write 32 in the base of 2 somehow? Yes. 32 is what? 2 raised to 5. Right? Correct. And 4 is what? 2 square into uh, t raised to 1 by 4 base is same that means power is same that means can i say 5 is equal to 2 t raised to 1 by 4 okay that means t raised to 1 by 4 is equal to 5 by 2 okay so let's raise both sides by 4 so t will be equal to 5 by 2 raised to 4 so 5 raised to 4 by 2 raised to 4 5 raised to 4 is what 625 2 raised to 4 is 16 so option c is the correct answer for question number 94 okay fine last three questions i guess yes if 4.8 raised to x is equal to 0 0.048 raised to y is equal to 1000, then what is value of 1 by x minus 1 by y? Okay. Now again, this is a kind of question where you can not assume any answer. Okay. Let me put my laptop to charge in just a minute. Okay. So although we cannot put numbers here, if you observe, 
they have asked one by x minus one by y. There is no log there. So what we can do is we can take x and y down by taking log. Okay, we can assume k also, but that will make it complicated. Let's take log of all three. That means we have log of 4.8 raised to x, or I can just write x log 4.8. is equal to y log 0.48 is equal to log of 1000 log of 1000 is what 3 if base is assumed to be 10 then log of 1000 is 3 right so is equal to 3 if you observe in option also we have 3 minus 3 1 by 3 something fine so now x log 4.8 is equal to 3 that means x is equal to 3 by log 4.8 and y is equal to 3 by log 0.48 Correct. Let's put it in the uh, required part. One by x, one by x is reciprocal. That means log 4.8 by 3 minus one by y. That is log 0.48 by 3. So three is common denominator. Log a minus log b is what? Log a by b. So common denominator is three, and we'll have log of 4.8 upon 0.48. Okay. How much will this be? You can just remove the decimal, or you can take on calculator, whatever you want. Ten. Log ten is one. So one by three is the correct answer option C. Okay. Next ninety six. If something, then what is value of? Uh, it might be a log x by y or log x by y. We don't know. Let's check. Fine. For that, let's take x and y to single sides first. Uh, same sides first. Okay. So let's take all that x terms to one side. X raised to To a minus three upon x raised to six minus a is equal to. On that side we'll have y raised to five a upon y raised to two a. Right. Let's use basic rules of indices and subtract the powers. So we have x raised to two a minus three minus six plus a. Right. Because minus minus plus. So two a plus a is three a. And minus three minus six is minus nine. Is equal to y raised to five a minus two a is three a. So x raised to 3a minus 9 is equal to y raised to 3a. Now they have asked us a into log of x minus y. Sorry, x upon y. Okay. Now observe carefully. Always keep basic rules of logarithm in mind. That whenever they are asking log of x by y, we can also write it as log x minus log y, right? So somehow we have to take log x minus log y. So let's think about how we can do it. Okay. Now there is one trick that. Here minus nine is extra, right? So let's make, let's try one thing. Let's keep it separate because we'll see. I'll tell you. So x raised to three a upon x raised to nine is equal to y raised to three a. Can I write it like this? And if I rearrange, can I write it like this also? Concentrate carefully. X raised to three a upon y raised to three a is equal to x raised to nine. right now if we take log of both sides what will happen is log of x by y raised to 3a because 3a is common power is equal to log of x raised to 9 let's take powers down log sorry 3a into log of x by y is equal to 9 log x so this 3 can be cancelled with this 9 3 so a log x y this is what is asked Is equal to what? Three log x. Three log x is option, which a. That's it. Okay. Or what you can do is you can take a long cut and take this y here uh, in subtraction, or maybe take log and then take it subtraction, then combine x and y and then take that x raised to nine to the other side. That is also fine. No issues. Whatever way you get the answer is the correct way. Always remember it in exam. Ninety-seven. Last one. It is a very good question. If x is equal to e raised to n minus e raised to minus n. Upon e raised to n plus e raised to minus n, then what is value of n? Now this is a complicated question, but good one. Okay, if you know basic properties of log. Last question for today. Consider it carefully. We want value of n, right? But n is at four places. N minus n, n minus n. So let's try to first bring it to some understandable form so that at least it will be easier for us to rearrange, right? What is the first step that you can see logically in exam also? How you should think. Now see, obviously this question looks very complicated, but it is not complicated. Trust me. First logical step is you have negative power. You don't want negative power because you want n, not minus n, right? 
So let's remove that negative power. How do we remove that negative power? E raised to n. Sorry. Let it save. Uh, e raised to n minus. Can I just write 1 upon e raised to n? Upon again e raised to n plus 1 upon e raised to n. Correct? Fine. Now let's take LCM. So x is equal to, or let me just write it here, is equal to. Can I just multiply this here? And we can write common denominator as e raised to n. So e raised to n into e raised to n will be e raised to n plus n or e raised to 2n minus 1 upon e raised to 2n plus 1 upon e raised to n. Observe carefully what I have done and now I can cancel this. That means x is equal to e raised to 2n minus 1 upon e raised to 2n plus 1. Still, we want value of n. That means somehow we have to separate that n. We don't want it in numerator and denominator. We want it at one single place. So this is equal to n, right? So let's cross multiply directly. So that means e raised to 2n minus 1 is equal to x into e raised to 2n plus 1, right? Let's multiply it open the brackets. e raised to 2n minus 1 is equal to x e raised to 2n plus x. Now let me take all the n related terms to single side. What will happen? e raised to 2n minus x e raised to 2n is equal to x plus 1. I am taking this minus 1 to that side as plus 1. Right? Fine. Now can I take e raised to 2n common? e raised to 2n into bracket 1 minus x is equal to x plus 1 or let's write 1 plus x so that it looks similar, better. Hmm? That means e raised to 2n is equal to 1 plus x upon 1 minus x. Okay. Now, what we can do is, in options if you see, every log is taken with base e. Right, base is e. So let's take log of this. Let's take log of this on both sides with base e. So let's take log of this with base e, log of this with base e. What will happen? That 2n power we can remove it outside. So 2n is equal to log e to base, sorry, 2n into log e to base e, sorry, 2n into log e to base e is equal to log of 1 plus x by 1 minus x to base e. Log e to base e is 1, same base, we can remove it. We want value of n, right, ultimately, fine. So this n, let's keep it on one side. So n is equal to what? Half, that 2 will go into uh, division, into log of 1 plus x by 1 minus x to base e. So let's check which option is it. A, right? Correct. Option A is the correct answer for question number 97. It was a good question. Fine. So I hope this is clear to everyone. Some questions in the last few were difficult. That is why we took a lot of time. But in exam, hopefully you can solve most of them except two, three questions. You can solve others in one minute, right? And in exam, if you see very complicated questions of logarithm, especially or indices, my advice is skip them in the first round. Come back to them once you are done. Because what happens is most students don't have time to come back later because they, uh, st they are stuck on every single question. That should not happen. right? S finish the simple, simple, simple ones first. Those which can be done in one minute. Then come back for the difficult ones which you can solve. Okay, fine. So I hope this is clear to everyone. We will stop here for today for this uh, particular question bank. Uh, le let's meet again in some next question bank you can join the telegram channel the description is given in the sorry link is given in the description for daily mcqs which i post and you can ask your doubts also on that channel freely the group that is linked to the channel obviously you can ask your doubts in comments also okay bye everyone let's stop